Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Got a special Friday edition here. Um, since I've got some donated wine, I'm, uh, I really want to go ahead and get, you know, go ahead and be able to showcase this stuff and not take a whole two weeks to do it. Since I got, what, six bottles of it? No, one, two, three, four, five, something like that. Yeah, five, six bottles. So, um, trying to uh, pump out some videos. Plus, I was a little late this week. Anyway, uh, today... Uh, we're going to finish up the Conde de Velasquez uh, line of wines. We got the 2008 Merlot from the Aconcagua Valley, Aconcagua Valley, uh, and uh, again, this should be uh, about a six to nine dollar uh, bottle of wine at, uh, at retail, and um, should be about that much per glass, somewhere in that range per glass. And uh, let's check it out. I'm already starting to smell it. Okay, I'm getting kind of some pepper on it, some spiciness, some uh, cherry, uh, jalapeno. Jalapeno, I mean, I'm getting that a lot. Really spicy. I feel like I've got some, you know, you know, cherry or jalapeno stuffed, no, cherry stuffed jalapenos. How about that? That's really, I, I really like that. Um, I'm also getting, it seems like there's a little bit of alcohol involved too. It's at 13.5, so it could be 14.5, it could be 12, it just, you know, it could be anywhere between that one and a half range, or one, one to one and a half range, so it could be, it could be a lot, or not that much. And get a hint of uh, chocolate. Starting off really good. Then I do like Merlot's a lot. I like this wine. I like this wine a lot. Um... Everything I got off of the bouquet, I'm, I'm getting on the palate. Um, I'm getting that chocolate. I'm getting that jalapeno flavor. I'm getting that cherry. Um, and I'm getting, yeah, a little bit of sweetness too. It's nice, a nice finish. The tannins aren't overwhelming. They're, they're, they're nice. Um, yeah, this, I like this wine. Really on the on the tip of the tongue too, yeah. I'm getting that spiciness. Even got a little bit. Of, I felt like a little bit of green pepper. So um, this is good. This is this is my this is right up my alley as far as as far as a Merlot and, and wines in general. Uh, especially since I've been really doing this show and, and I've been catching up tints of jalapeno a lot. And I, I really enjoy jalapeno. I mean, I can't really necessarily eat an entire jalapeno. You know. Um, some people have done. <laughs> uh, I have had the uh, oh, little, little, hopefully, quick story. Back in high school, I was working at a Chinese restaurant. A friend of mine brought something to, uh, we had a little college night at our high school library. And uh, I just started working there, so I was kind of not really sure about everything. Handed me something, he said it was Chinese candy. And it was one of those red peppers that they put in, you know, orange-flavored beef and General Tso's chicken and stuff like that. Oh, that was hot. And... I knew a guy that was a friend of the owner that could eat a bowl of those. I don't know how he did it, but um, yeah, I, this is this is really good. You know what? I'm gonna go 90 on this. You know, to, to me, it, it's 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 an excellent wine. I think it does everything it should do. Um, as far as for me, for what I like, you know, you may think it's an 85, you may think it's an 80, you may think it's a 95, and that's something that you know, I probably need to remind everybody. Just because I like something or I don't like something, you know, doesn't you know doesn't necessarily mean anything. Uh, the, the Chardonnay that I scored an 88, uh, my mother said she'd give it an 84. You know, and that's her honest opinion about it. You know, I I particularly liked it. I liked it because it was, it was light and easy drinking, which is not what you expect out of a Chardonnay. So maybe 
maybe he was drinking not like a Sauvignon Blanc, but you know, and some people might look at that as, as bad, but you know, I had I got the characteristics of Chardonnay. I just got it was it was an easy drinking wine. So um, you know, that's a perfect example of I might score something one way and somebody will score it the other. So I mean it's all about what we like and, and our on our stuff. You know, I went to a thing on Tuesday with for a flicks and food. I uh, had a uh, uh, um, a tweet up at Roaring Fork. It was a great time. Uh, that was one of the things I was talking with uh, Robert McGuire, Fix Flix and Food, is that you know everybody's backgrounds are different. Your, you know our experiences. Um, if I didn't grow up in in Texas, uh, th I may not get that jalapeno very much. I might get a different pepper. I might think of it as green pepper or something else. But growing up here and and having that type of culture uh, made me. Uh, gravitate towards that kind of stuff. So that's something to remember that, you know, you, you might be up in the Northeast or up, up in the Midwest or, or up in the Northwest, you know, up in the northern parts of the country where Mexican food or Tex-Mex is not as prevalent um, as it is down here in Texas and really the South, Southwest. Um, Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, California, all, all of these states have, you know, lots of uh, Mexican restaurants, what you call them Tex-Mex or California style or whatever. Um, but you know, jalapenos are used a lot, so that's something I'm going to pick up on. Um, if you're in a different state that doesn't really have that, you may not pick up on it. Um, again, the Aconcagua uh, Valley, man, at work this time. Um, it, it, it's, it's got lots of different levels on it, so uh, the reds are usually um, grown higher up, whereas the, 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 the bolder reds, so this and the Cabernet were very, are very likely on the upper parts of the, of the valley, up, up the Andes Mountains, and the, um, or the Aconcagua Mountain. Um, and then the, uh, then the lower part of the valley is going to be where your Pinot Noirs and your Sauvignon Blancs and your Chardonnays are going to be grown. Uh, I actually want to highly recommend it. Uh, seven minutes is up. Click the links. Friend me up on all the, on all the uh, social networks. I, I always pimp out Twitter and Facebook, but I'm on FriendFeed. I'm on Vidler, you know, Vidler. I'm on YouTube. Uh, I'm getting better with getting those YouTube videos uploaded. I've got a few that I need to do. But I've got some automation now on, on uploading videos to Vidler now. I mean, to uh, YouTube. I mean, I still upload to Vidler. Um, and, uh, uh, and if you want to do a free fantasy football league, hit me up, man. Uh, send me an email. Send me an at. Send me a you know, mention or a direct message on uh, Twitter. Uh, we'll get you set up. i got four people for the league so far. I need eight more. Draft is on fri um, yeah, Friday at midnight. So Thursday into Friday, midnight, September 4th. So we got a week. Actually, a little bit less than a week to get that set up. And uh, it's just a free league. It's, uh, I think I call it the, the Revenge of the Twitterati, I think is what the actual name of the league is. So, um, friend me up. Hit the ads. Uh, I'm going to bring back the affiliate ads. I think I'm going to do that. I've got enough viewers now. I think maybe it'll make a difference. The marketplace, the library. You know, buy some books. I got, you know, get some, uh, get some glassware from Amazon. Uh, hopefully some new stuff coming, too. I had a nice conversation with somebody yesterday about some uh, monetizing efforts. That's it. I'll see everybody again next time.